the entire Reggie family. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup for sure. Yes. And uh, something I'm very excited to see. I, I know you know, Boo. Yeah. Ray, uh, Eternatus, very near and dear to my heart. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> not to mention Aiden here, uh, amazing friend. And just a little tidbit, my son's name's Aiden. So I might project oh, here. Oh, no. <laughs> Wancho's no. bias confirmed. No. Uh, but this this match is very, mm. very 50-50. Oh, well, opinion. look at that. Two scoop-up nets for Charlie Kerr in the prize cards. That is pretty awful, actually. That, for this matchup specifically. Exactly. <laughs> we'll talk about it a little bit. Scoop-up nets could be a very big card in this yeah. matchup. Having a couple prize could hurt, but he has... I believe two more anyway. So um, a couple of prizes there as well for Aiden. The, the Galarian Weezing is going to be the key card in this yeah. matchup. So he does have one, one prize, prize, but he has two more. He has the perfect start, actually. Well, and here we go. Yeah, that coughing in the active position. Here we go, Wancho Swiss round 13 to start off our day two. Charlie Kerr versus Aiden Koos here. Um, and I got to talk a little bit with these players right before this match. Charlie Kerr said uh, that he's working out four hours of sleep. And Aiden said he's never played a game with this deck before entering this regional. So, <laughs> <laughs> and here's our day two players. I mean, obviously these players are sitting at a record of 10-1-1 right now. Mm -hmm. um, so 31 points, I've heard the rumors that you're trying to get to a, about a 35 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is what they're aiming for. So this is a very important match here that one of these players wants to win. So we're starting over on Charlie's side of the field, getting a couple Reggie out here and going um, into the deck as well with a quick ball discarding Marnie. Exactly. So if you're not familiar yet with the Reggie deck, very, very straightforward deck. It involves a lot of pieces, quite literally, because it involves ancient wisdom. And to be able to use ancient wisdom, you're, the Reggie, entire Reggie family has to be mm -hmm. in play. The so, whole party. <laughs> exactly. But then once they are, you can accelerate a three energy from the discard pile. Yeah. Absolutely powerful. Even more powerful than Primal Turbo, some would say. I know, yeah. And that's uh, pretty hard to beat, for sure. But Reggie has been doing it for months now, really. All right. So we have uh, had the twin energy attachment here for Charlie Kerr. And then it's just a toss over to Aiden's turn. Something I want to say real quick. Boost Shake in hand here for Aiden. Absolutely the powerful. The Boost Shake. Yes, yeah. powerful card. Something you do want to see on your first turn. Allows you to evolve straight into the Galarian Weezing on your first turn as soon as it comes down, but you do end your turn there. But Galarian Weezing, very, very powerful Pokemon here in this matchup. Neutralizing Gas will shut off every Pokemon ability on your opponent's side of the field. And again, I talked about Ancient Wisdom being a key key part of the Reggie Gigas, uh, or sorry, the Reggie deck. And if you don't have access to that, it's gonna be a hard time. Yeah, and the key thing about that too is you're shutting off your opponent's abilities, but you still have your abilities as well. Um, exactly. So, yeah, it's it's a big card, of course, for this deck, but specifically this matchup because there are not going to be any abilities on Charlie Kerr's side uh, unless they had a wheezing with uh, <laughs> neutralizing gas. But exactly. that is not going to be the case, of course, in a Reggie deck. All right, so we are going to see that boost shake coming out here. So it is going to be the evolution. We didn't see any energy there from Aiden, so the boost shake is uh, pretty great mm -hmm. there to have in order to still get into that Galarian Weezing and just turn on that neutralizing gas nice and early here, and we have to see how Charlie chooses to deal with that. So what are the cards in Charlie's deck, Wancho, that are going to help with this specific matchup? I was just about to talk about that. Do the it. Reggie Alecki in the active actually is the perfect start. So Aiden here gets the perfect start. So does Charlie, though, because of the electromagnetic sonar. That's a, that's an early attack you can use. It's it's probably, probably the most efficient attack in the Reggie deck right now. Something you do want to see when you're facing a a wheezing, because you're not going to be able to do damage. You're going to have to accept that. But what you can get is more resources, more items. Electromagnetic sonar essentially gets you a trainer card from your discard pile, put it into your hand so you can get uh, supporters. Scoop up nets are going to be big, because again, neutral. Uh, Galarian Weezing only does poison, 60 damage, up to 60 damage per turn. Yeah. So you can essentially erase Take it that off. Yeah. continuously. <laughs> yeah, and that's why we were saying it's kind of a bummer. There's two in the prize cards uh, for Charlie. So working with a slimmer line of those scoop up nets at this point in time. But hey, we're going to see how this continues to play out. It's not too often you have to see Reggie just manually attaching. Uh, energy per turn, but that's what we're going to be seeing here, <laughs> thanks to Aiden's deck. And speaking of Aiden's deck, we are over here on this side.
side now, jumping into the deck as well with a quick ball, grabbing a basic Pokemon out of the deck, and I'm sure he's probably going to bench it right away. Ooh, Ooh it's going to be that Sneasler, Hisuian e Sneasler. Exactly. Very important card in the matchup as well here. I, I mentioned earlier the severe poison. Uh, that's why I meant I said up to 60. You're going to need the Hisuian Sneasler with yeah. the poison peak to increase the damage of the poison and 60 damage a turn is quite a difference again that's in between turns here and uh, that's definitely going to come into play unfortunately reggie lecky does have 130 hp so he's going to take three ticks of poison but still any damage is good i just have to say here as well aiden very good plays if you notice he's playing radiant uh sorry he's playing eternatus yeah. But there's no Eternus. Yeah, there's no Eternus here. And that's on purpose. He's mm -hmm. discarding them, if you notice there, because uh, I believe Charlie does play something like Serena. He's playing around it, right? Yeah. He only wants those Weezings in play. He can, he can essentially win with just the Weezings with proper supporters, right? Yeah. If he gets the Judge at the right time, right boss's orders at the right time, he can, he can really run away with this game, especially when you have two, because Charlie does play Escape Rope. Yeah. Now, Escape Rope, no longer now. And there it is. We're going to see the Severe Poison. Yep, that Severe Poison coming into play. It's not too often we get to see status conditions, the status markers come out here. So we got the little <laughs> the little skull here now on that Reggie Alecki. Uh, and it is, it is going to go down um, in just a couple of turns if Charlie can't get it out of the active position, get that poison off. But hey, you know what does that? An Escape Rope. But guess what? Aiden has another Galarian Weezing <laughs> just tossed right up. Of course, someone doesn't have an energy attached, but hey, it's still neutralized gassing onto the field. So and we are going to see one scoop up net down here now for Charlie Kerr, uh, scooping up that Pokemon to put the Reggie Lucky back into the active position after that escape rope happens. So that's one down so far. But guess what? We have that electromagnetic sonar. It's technically infinite escape rope. That one, oh, uh, sorry, true, uh, sorry. Yeah. infinite scoop up net. Yes, infinite yes. anything, as long as you can get electromagnetic sonar. Infinite items. Exactly. And, you know, <laughs> that buys you time. If you notice, the Reggie gig is now in the, in the bench. It's almost, it's quite close to getting an attack off. Yeah. It does have three energy technically attached. Gigaton break, 150. That's, That's enough to take a knockout on the Weezing. And it really yeah. has to start targeting that down or has to find a new game plan if uh, the, the Weezing start getting knocked out. Might be time to go into your... Your Eternatus, but again, Regigigas actually does quite a bit of damage to Eternatus. Oh, it absolutely does. It does that extra damage for the VMAX Pokemon, 150 plus damage. I think that's one of like the biggest modifiers that we have <laughs> in the game, honestly, <laughs> off of a base damage move. So yeah, that Regigigas is not what the Eternatus VMAX wants to be eyeing down. So I'm excited to see um, how Aiden chooses to navigate through this matchup. But honestly, as you can tell from both of the play, by both of these players, they are just absolutely um, you know, familiar with their decks, familiar with this matchup and how to play through this. Exactly. Electromagnetic sonar being played there, actually grabbing the ordinary rod. Very interesting. I was I, In my mind, I was thinking infinite yeah. scoop up net time, but... Ordinary rod is uh, another card, of course, that you can get as well. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Yep, it's just going to be <laughs> that ordinary rod, and now we're seeing a Marty here from Aiden's side of the field. So Charlie's only going to get four cards here. Aiden is going to get five off the Marty. And yeah, very important Marnie. I get you, that's exactly what you want to change. Yep. You want to change your Marnies, you want to change your Judge. Force uh, Charlie to really find those energies to be able to attack. Or, yeah, and again, there are a lot of not so live cards here for Charlie, right? You don't need the Reggies anymore. But Aiden does not find the energy, misses oh. an attack here. Very unfortunate. Yeah, that is definitely not when you, what you want to see for sure. We have on the opposite end here, Energy Lotto, but that's going to be another energy <laughs> fail for our players here. Charlie Kerr not going to find an energy off of that Energy Lotto. Of course, it's just the top seven cards, and you draw an energy out of there. But that is going to be no energy here. The big parasol did come down for Aiden. But yeah, as you said, Wancho, no energy attachment for that oh. turn is pretty major. Does get the gift energy attachment, though. He didn't oh, really need anything from the lotto. Maybe a, the twin energy would, would have been perfect. But, yeah. you know, you, get, you got an attach. That's, uh, yeah, you got an attach. Consistency, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's uh, more than... Uh, that, that's more one more than Aiden had the last turn. Yeah, <laughs> yo, that's true. That is very, very true. All right, so we're going to see the Temple Ooh, of Sinnoh. Oh, my goodness. Card. How did I not spot <laughs> that there? Temple of Sinnoh here uh, disables, well, turns every special energy into a colorless. Yeah. The, it matters here. That's why Charlie, 
Charlie actually playing it very smart, attaching to the Regigigas. Yeah. Only requires Carlos if he decided to try and power up one of the colored Regis. That Temple of Sinnoh is going to be a pain. Uh, unfortunately, Twin Energy now only providing one, so he's yep. down one turn, one, one energy attachment turn. Yeah, luckily it is all colorless, but yeah, as you said, Wancho, that Twin Energy is just going to be one now, unless that Temple of Sinnoh can be bumped here. But Aiden is going to play a switch card here to get that Galarian Weezing with the energy attached into the active position. So burning a switch card, but still being able to get off this uh, poison attack, yes. which is extremely important here. Of course, that Reggie Lucky does survive. I think it's 130 HP exactly. on there. Yep, so that is still surviving, at least for now, uh, before the poison ticks down if Charlie can't move it. But hey, Ooh. another scoop up net here. And this would be the second scoop up net now. So both are big. in the discard. I don't think he needs to scoop up net anymore because he has nope. the right Pokemon in the active with the right stadium. <laughs> there it is. Gigaton break, 150 damage, enough to take a knockout there. Yep, huge knock there. The Path to the Peak is what uh, bumped that Temple of Sinnoh, so the Twin Energy was active again. And now it's over to Aiden to kind of, like you said, want to re-strategize. Okay, what do I do from here? One of my Glaren Weezing is gone. Uh, you know, obviously things didn't play out yes. to slow Charlie down enough. And I'm not surprised. Reggie just works like this, to be honest. <laughs> Even when they have to manually attach it, it's such a strong deck. They had to play the... The old school, right? They had to, they yeah, had right? to attach. No, 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 <laughs> no ability. No shenanigans needed. here. <laughs> but something of note as well, Aiden, this is his last wheezing. Remember, we, we saw oh, a 1-1 yes, one, one line prize, so this is the last one. And it's going to take more than one wheezing to deal with the Reggie Gigas. 150 HP, that's a couple of turns with the poison. So now mm -hmm. we finally do see Eternatus hit the field, but again... Not sure if that's the right, uh, if that's a Pokemon you do want to attack with. Weezing is just a perfect Pokemon in this matchup. Uh, Temple of Sinnoh, though, should help out a little bit if Charlie yeah. does not have an energy in hand. Yep, that Aurora energy is going to be turned into a colorless, but of course that twin energy is the one that is also just a colorless. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because so it's, it's just... Yeah, it, it yeah. turns out a colorless, but then it's there, there's only four energy oh, attached. Oh, I got you, I got you. Oh, yeah, and it's five. I, yeah. I always forget how large the Reggie move is, <laughs> honestly. Usually we're just used to, okay, here's all my energy and attack. But no, it is five, not four energy. Exactly. <laughs> it's not every day you see how much how many things right. are attached to that Reggie, and you're just <laughs> right. like... That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There's so much there, and it's still not enough. But, but yeah, for Aiden, we did see the E-turn come down, and now we're going to see the Crobat to use that Dark Asset ability to Ooh. draw up to six cards into the hand. Ooh, is that two shiny goons? <laughs> I, was, I was excited for the energy, because Aiden here was yeah, having you need a that, bit of energy yeah. drop. The Galarian Zigzagoon's actually very important in the matchup as well. We we got to see the Regieleki go down to 10 HP. Yep. The Zigzagoon pings should help with the... To, to get those key knockouts for sure. Yeah, balancing out a little bit of damage here, but you have to play them at the perfect time. Okay, as very well. important draw here. Has to be a, an energy. It was a research. Pretty good. He had no energy in hand. So, mm. oh, oh, he had the stadium, so he has the attack. Oh, yeah. There's a, the stadium <laughs> bump works as well. That, that's good, too. That's good, too. <laughs> Yes, so the stadium is going to bump that Temple of Sinnoh, so that obstacle is out of the way. Still poison here on the Regigigas, but hey, there are prize cards being taken now. That is both Galarian Weezing being eliminated from Aiden's side of the field here. Charlie Kerr going down to four prize cards. Aiden not having taken a single prize card yet. That, that damage for the severe po poison is just not sticking. Exactly here, and uh, he's going to really need to find the some dark patches he needs to find energy he needs to find a switch he needs so many things here to take this knockout and uh it, he has to take it here again that reggie is doing a lot of damage yeah and uh but yeah it's just a matter of can he find it <laughs> absolutely and here we go we're gonna see a goon ping here onto charlie kerr's side of the field so that's just gonna be one damage counter 10 damage here put onto that reggie gigas in the active position we are gonna see another energy attachment as you said wancho there's been a bit of an energy drought i mean eternatus is not really infamous for playing a ton of energy in the deck because you don't really require a lot um and that's just gonna go straight into a judge as well
well. So both players going to go down to four cards. All right, just want to talk about real quick. So the the poison isn't enough right now. There's 100 damage on the Regigigas. But again, because of the path of the peak, Radiant Sneasler's ability is not activated. He's actually 10 yeah. damage off here, I believe. Yeah, that is a Radiant Pokemon, which means it is a rule box Pokemon being shut down at the moment for that path, from that path to the peak. Eternatus VMAX is going to come out as well, which is also being shut down with the path of the peak. Sorry, miscounted there. Because of the because of the Zigzagoon, that's just enough. It was 110, oh, yes. not the ping, 100. The ping. Yes, very, mm -hmm. very important card there. Big knockout, but now Charlie Kerr has access to his abilities. Yes, absolutely. If he finds another Reggie. <laughs> if there's another Reggie, but hey, you know, I feel like the Reggie decks are always able to somehow pull it off here. And there's not too many obstacles in the way right now for Charlie, so I'm sure very happy here. But I don't know. I haven't gotten to look at this hand. Is there any supporter in there that might help out a bit? Um, let's see here. Ordinary Rod does help out, does get you, you know, your couple of Reggies back, does increase the consistency of that, get, get more resources in there. I but don't way think to I draw saw a because supporter. I mean, way to draw there. You have yeah. the Reggie Drago in the active That's with, true, yes. with the Dragon's Horde ability. As long as you get to thin down your hand a little bit, I mean, it's no Genesect V, it's no Fusion Strike system, <laughs> but it's pretty good in the active. It pretty, works. Good in a, pretty good in a pinch. Yeah, Dragon Horde is a huge component to this deck to draw up to five cards in hand, and Ooh. that's why you want to thin. Oh, yeah, and that speed energy as well, drawing into two cards. Ooh, draws into a research. Pretty that's another good. way oh, to Marty get. Oh, there's a well. You know why? It's because because it's rainbow. I know. It's so hard to see. <laughs> exactly. It's so hard to see. All right, we're just gonna jump straight back into the deck with that research, the scoop up net that was found off the prize cards, going into the discard pile as well. Um, still has access to so many cards now, though, being drawn out of the deck. But the most uh, important one is the, that quick the, ball because yes. that finds you the Reggie Gigas. We need the Reggie, and that was the Reggie that was just put back into the deck as well with that Ordinary Rod. So Charlie Kerr sequencing here like a champ and uh, still so many cards left to play for the turn. Exactly, but the only card that matters is the Regigigas with the Ancient Wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to play cards from your hand. If you can just get energy from your discard pile, it's just a matter of what attacker does he decide to, to attack with, right? Yes. You can choose to attack with the Regidrago and the active Giant Fang, 160. That's enough. You can, uh, if he has a way to switch, I don't think I see, so it might just have yeah. to be that. Uh, which is good enough, right? 160 Ooh. damage, gift energy in the active as well. Pretty good cards. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. Just in case it gets knocked out. Yep, and those two Aurora energy were in the discard pile, so that is going to uh, count for the color energy needed for that giant fangs attack. 160 damage, of course, that's plenty to knock out a, a poor little coughing in the <laughs> active position there. So Charlie Kerr is going to take another prize card, doing, going down to three, just proving that Reggie could still make it through, even being uh, shut down completely from those abilities. Yes. But hey, Charlie Big. Kerr bringing it out. Big Marnie here, though, by Aiden. Again, Aiden just doing exactly what he needs to do. He has to limit Charlie's hand. Yeah. Um, that That's some, sometimes Achilles' heel of the Reggie deck. A little bit inconsistent. Again, you have yeah. to play so many different Pokemon, but that's why gift energy is so important. You know, despite the Marnie, if this Reggie Drago goes down, you still get a full hand of seven. That seems pretty good. Great addition to the Reggie decks for sure. Yeah, look at that. Forest Seal Stone. A little <laughs> bit of a confusing mechanic sometimes because Path to the Peak was in play, but Forest Seal Stone is not shut down by Path to the Peak. It is a separate tool card, a separate ability, and that, that <laughs> stadium was bumped with the Temple of Sinnoh on Aiden's side, but guess what? Charlie Kerr is not letting up here. Puts another Path to the Peak straight back into play. <laughs> so that Forest Seal Stone being flipped there for Aiden, but to no prevail. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to be it. Just too many obstacles, unfortunately, in Aiden's way. Exactly. Charlie Kerr is going to take the first game in this set. Wow. is that Did that play out how you expected it to, Wancho? <laughs> um, not entirely. I mean, I just huge props here for Char Charlie to be able to maneuver around not having abilities. Oh, you know, yeah. In, in my mind, as an as an Eternity, Eternatus player myself, I'm just thinking, you know what, if I shot up their, their abilities, I'm golden. But no, just when you're playing against a very, very good player, getting the right attachment on the right Pokemon as well, it's, um, it's a completely different ballgame. Absolutely. Yeah, Aiden, I know, was kind of uh, trying to prep for this matchup. I mean, when you think about it on paper, 
Um, it does look rough for the Reggie deck, for sure. And I mean, me, being a Reggie player as well, you could kind of look at a Galarian Weezing, even two on the board that you're staring down and feel pretty uh, pretty hopeless there yeah. <laughs> because that is just such a, a tough thing to deal with. But Charlie Kerr held composure there, knew exactly how to get through that, did uh, all of the actions they required there, manually attached, took it slow, mm -hmm. and was able to pull out a win there. So yeah, huge props there for Charlie. Exactly. Sometimes that slow start is exactly what you need to do, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, but hopefully here we see Aiden try and adjust their strategy by, I mean, going first, absolutely big. We got to yeah. see them start with a boost shake early on. Yeah. You know, that, that could be big if they can get that boost shake this time on the very first turn of the game. Can you imagine? Uh, now looking at the prizes, nothing too key here. Just a couple of supporters. And uh, here we go. We do have the game. Again, Aiden starting with the perfect start, in my opinion. Just getting the coffee. Again, the scary thing is sometimes when you start the Pokemon beat, you don't want to. <laughs> and your deck is just four Crobat Bs. Right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yep. Here we go. Jumping into our game two between these players. Aiden was our turn one here. Got the energy attachment, but that's just going to be a pass back to Char Charlie. And real quick, Charlie here has the opportunity to win this game. It's it is a possibility here if Charlie just has the most that would be a perfect lot, hand. I mean, I've seen it happen, though, many times. <laughs> I mean, just yesterday, we saw Lunatone take a knockout That's on true. a new V. Right? <laughs> That's on turn one, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's so very true. If the right cards go into the hand, all the Reggie's in play, a couple of energies in the discard pile, the lone coughing could go down here, and Charlie Kirk could advance to okay. round 14. The question is here, Wancho, what does the hand look like? Does Charlie have the possibility to be able to do this? Of course, we do have the help of Dragon's Horde. That Reggie Drago is coming out for that purpose, I'm sure, to get as many cards in hand as possible to potentially be able to pull off this turn one win, which would be incredible. Taking a quick 2-0, uh, that would be wild to see. But like we said, it is going to require a lot. Um, unfortunately, I think it's just a scoop up Oof. net. That's the only way to draw here using the Reggie Drago's Dragon Horde. A lot on the back of this yeah, Reggie Drago. This it's going to be three cards, though. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god. Last two, card there. <laughs> two Reggie, and then we get a Professor's Research, which is going to draw Charlie into a, a fresh hand of seven cards. We could actually see this one. Is there an energy in the discard pile? Because it could I, be I just an know. Ultra Ball is energy. No? Oh is my gosh, that's, that's, that's two Aurora in hand. Oh my Wait, god, with Ultra it? Ball? That's two Aurora. It is, it is. Is there one energy in <gasps> the discard ball? Okay, is it going to happen? Get out of here. <laughs> Ultra Ball, <laughs> two Aurora energy. Aiden is looking at this like, what is happening here? Absolutely defeated right now because this is the exact turn you do not want to be seeing. Exactly. I mean, they did get the opportunity to shut off the abilities. And uh, Charlie oh just has gosh. access to the energies. Even if he doesn't get the <laughs> knockout here, he has the energy on board already. He has energy <laughs> acceleration. Yes, he could have won. It was could have been exciting, but there's only two in the oh, discard box. Oh, that is such a bummer. If there was just one <laughs> more, we could have seen it. Aiden, I'm sure, seeing um, seeing their day two flash before their <laughs> eyes right there. But hey, we're still in it now. Neutralizing gas is online. But I mean, at this point, too, Charlie had such an explosive turn one there. This is going to be even tougher to have to deal with on Aiden's side of the field. Exactly. We're going to have to slow them down a bit. It's going to be dropping that Temple of Sinnoh. That means Aurora Energy's. You know, they don't work anymore. You can't attack with that Reggie Drago. Yep. Play the judge as well. Limit their options. You gotta slow them down. They they had they were very, very explosive. Used a couple of resources to get into this position. Yeah. Maybe punish them by giving them only four cards afterwards. Yeah, every single move is so crucial here for Aiden. That's why you see so much uh, being thought through with every card that's being played right now. Temple of Sinnoh is going to come out. We're going to see the, the Galarian Zigzagoon, the shiny one, the ping there onto that Reggie Drago, um, which we saw very similarly to the last game as well. And then we're going back into the deck here with an Ultra Ball, discarding Again. two cards here. That's, is that the Serena? A Serena and, and a, a judge. judge. Yes, okay. a couple of supporters does find the uh, Suyin Sneezer. Again, very important card. Yep. You want to up the damage. It has to, you have to do 60 per turn. And because of the combination of the headphone tantrum oh. as well, 120 HP on the Reggie Drago. So that's, you know, there, there's, a, it, there's, a, there's a clock on that Reggie Drago there. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Look at that. Boost shake was drawn into off the Marnie, but just a little too late. <laughs> so sad. Ooh, but there, hey. There's a debate, though, b between do you want to do damage or do you want to boost shake, boost shake, protect yourself from this escape rope? And it looks like Aiden prioritizing board state. Yes. Very, very smart here. It's so tempting to get damage on board, but sometimes, you know, you have to determine what do I need to do yes. for future rounds. Path of the Peak there being played. Very important card. I'm sure Aiden wanted that Temple of Sinnoh to stick because now Charlie only needs an energy and he's going to be taking knockouts. Absolutely, and that's why it is so uh, important here for, like you said, Wancho, for Aiden to just establish the board state there. Um, just keep composure, keep chugging along here, but hey, that's going to be a capture energy there. Uh, manual attachment for Charlie, and that's right. going to be it. The knockout there yes, on that Galarian fangs. wheezing with the giant fangs. Going to be one prize card down for Charlie Kerr. So already taking the lead in prizes. Absolutely amazing board state here on Charlie. Charlie's side of the field. So even with that neutralizing gas, Aiden needs to find something else here. Yes, he's going Some to need sort of strategy. another wheezing. <laughs> and yes, that's that hard. starts with playing another coughing. So actually, <laughs> pretty good start there. Again, it's, it's he's not out of it here. Right now, all all the eggs are in the Reggie Drago basket. So if yep. Aiden this time starts to put poison, in fact, if he did damage last turn, that Reggie Drago could potentially gotten knocked out by now. Right? That means. Yep. No more energies in play, and then you have neutralizing gas. Yeah, you have a little bit of, uh, like, you buy yourself a couple of turns potentially with that. But, yeah, Aiden's still getting to uh, burn through the deck here with a forest seal stone. So uh, being able to flip that even on the path to the peak because it's its own item card there, mm -hmm. tool uh, card attachment, and exactly. it's going to be one card of anything in deck that you can draw out. Wancho, what was the card? I didn't quite see. I've had to guess it was a Temple of Sinnoh. No, it's no, a Marnie. It's a Marnie. Yeah. Very Reset important. the hands. Exactly. Oh, one card in hand. Okay, yeah, definitely. Refresh your hand, disrupt your opponent. Getting Ooh, the Temple nice. of Sinnoh anyway. Nice. Very important card. Absolutely. That is fantastic. All right. So, yeah, the Temple of Sinnoh is in hand here for Aiden. So there's at least that. But honestly, I feel like every time Aiden slaps down Temple, Charlie just slaps down another path. <laughs> <laughs> it's like happened every single time. It's literally the Stadium Wars because it's yeah, very important it here. Again, Path of the Peak shuts down Hisui and Sneasler. That means mm -hmm. my Reggies get to survive a little bit longer. Uh, Temple of Sinnoh, if I have this, you can't really attack. So yeah. very, very, very important. We actually have to keep count of how many there are left. I believe there's still two Path of the Peaks in the Reggie deck. Might be two, might be one. I think he had to discard one earlier and he had to okay. play one. And then uh, this is the second Temple of Sinnoh. All right, and look at this. Aiden still being able to draw through the deck here. Quick balling, a forward seal stone, really no use at this point because that one has already been used. Into a crowbat, which is going to be more draw support for this turn for Aiden. So it's going to be four extra cards to the hand of up to six off that dark asset. It was like an escape rope. Let's see a dark patch. Again, dark patch. Doesn't yeah. really need to play anything too patch. much this turn. I, I'm sure all he really needed to find was maybe a, the, the wheezing, but I, I got to see Charlie's hand a little bit. No boss's orders. That's that's okay, an out yeah. here. No, no boss's orders, no escape rope just yet. Um, that is one way to break this ability lock and then get mm -hmm. access to your ancient wisdom again one more time. But you know what? I'm just going to attach an energy. That's that's another way to get energy on board. Yeah, just manual attaching, uh, taking it slow, just like we saw in the game one. It's just going to be that twin energy onto the Red Dialecki into a Marnie. So both players' hands, all those Ooh, cards. Ooh, escape rope, though, off the Marnie. Ah. And again, that's why we needed a second Galarian Weezing. Look at that, but it's just going to be... Oh, the, the manual retreat. Yeah, the manual retreat here, which, I mean, isn't too bad for Reggie decks because you kind of want the uh, the energy in the discard pile if you're able to use your abilities, of course, which I would assume at this point, no, it's just going to be electromagnetic sonar here for Charlie. Exactly, again. Grabbing the path to the peak huge. He did get the escape rope, but opting to, you know what, I'm not going to yeah. use it right now because I don't have the stadium. I don't have to. I don't have the stadium to bump the Temple of Sinnoh. And again, Temple of Sinnoh is such a debilitating yeah. card for the Reggie deck. And, you know, I was talking about, you know what, we should keep count of how many <laughs> stadiums it's both players have. Yes, it's I infinite, It's <laughs> infinite. <laughs> yes. With the electromagnetic sonar, it's, it is infinite. Yep. So Charlie Kerr should be, should be able to win the, the stadium more here. 
Absolutely, the infinite loop of the path. And I mean, that just shows you how well Charlie is playing this out, it's taking everything into consideration here, making sure that the, the path to the peak is lined up in hand before any other actions go down here. But Ooh. still, stacked hand for the next turn, and we're not seeing exactly. any disruption from Aiden's side of the field. So Charlie is going to be able to do a lot on this turn. I know, that was the perfect hand here for Charlie, especially, you know, getting the path to the peak from the electromagnetic, electromagnetic sonar. Aiden had to play some sort of disruption there. Fortunately, did not have it. Here we go. His student heavy ball. Charlie's going to look through the prize cards here, and if there's a basic Pokemon uh, in there, switch it with the Hisuian Heavy Ball. Fantastic card for the Reggie deck, so that if you do prize any of your Reggies, you can just grab yep. them back out again. Exactly. They're all basic, and they're all important. <laughs> hey, that is very true. <laughs> yeah, Heavy Ball, perfect card for this deck, for sure. All right. all right, so here we go. This is it. This is the big turn for Charlie here, and let's see how he chooses to sequence it. Yep, yep, we're going to see, I mean, it just drop down the path, drop down the escape rope, and then it's just a matter of what attacker do you go into? I like that he played the escape rope first before playing the path. Maybe, yeah, it's smart. You know, throw, uh, throw Aiden off a little bit, maybe make, make him think he doesn't have the path, but I know, he, he got it from the electromagnetic, so electromagnetic sonar. He should be able to know here. But <laughs> yeah. There we go. He does now have access to his abilities. Yeah, abilities are online. Once that Galarian Weezing is onto the bench and no longer in the active for Aiden, Charlie has abilities, which means this Reggie deck can work as it was supposed to um, before that okay. neutralizing gas. And then something, another thing really, really scary here that I have to talk about is the, the Reggie Rock. The Reggie Rock with the Giga Impact Attack does 140 damage, and Eternatus is weak to fighting, and there's a Choice Belt as well. That's, that means it's Ooh. doing 170 damage. Eternatus has 340 HP, and that's just enough. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Off a single prize. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely uh, not what you want to be seeing. Uh, and that's, I mean, one of the... Um telltale signs of a good deck when you can play off of all these different types of weaknesses that are in the format mm -hmm. and really take these games uh you know capitalizing off of mm -hmm. it that's awesome so yeah reggie rock is huge here unfortunately for that e-turn but exactly. we're still getting through this uh turn here and we're gonna jump into the discard pile off that ancient wisdom into three energy onto the reg ice here mm -hmm. some blizzard some blizzard bind is gonna be what's happening exactly <laughs> probably you know it's doesn't quite matter. 90 damage, that's all you really need there. Yeah. It does have a secondary effect, which it doesn't come into play. Probably the Reggie he can spare because it should get knocked out here. But, oh, because of the Path of the Peak, Eternal Zone is no longer active. That means he had to uh, remove a Pokemon yes. from the bench. Again, uh, Eternal Zone allows you to play eight bench, which is absolutely <laughs> huge. Yeah, we didn't even explain that there just because, um, <laughs> you know, there, Aiden's been keeping a, a pretty tight bench exactly. here. But yeah, that is huge. If um, if the Path to the Peak comes into play, that ability on the VMAX, the Eternatus VMAX is turned off, and you have to go back to a normal bench of yes. just five maximum Pokemon there. So that was that interaction that you just saw. Ooh, finds another Temple of Sinnoh paired off the Marnie, right? Yep. So um, very, it could be a very, very big turn here. Again, neutralizing ga gas active again. Yeah. And um, Charlie decided to attack with the Regi Ice, which again requires two water energies. But under Temple of Sinnoh, though, there are no more water energies. And But luckily, the Regi Aleki on the bench is pretty much powered up. He can easily just retreat here and just do the electromagnetic sonar once again to try and find that stadium. Yeah, and you got to think, too, Charlie did this. Um, oh, but he didn't choose to play it. Pretty flawlessly. Yeah, so it's just there's the Path of Peak stays there. So just 40 damage now on the Reg Eyes. Let's see You're here. So right. I yeah. mean, Reg Eyes can't knock out the Weezing at the moment, 130 HP. But again, so that means there, he has to choose a different attacker. I think I, I do like this play here. Again, force the retreat mm -hmm. or, you know, doing 90 damage, that's, that's, that's a-okay. You're, you're two-shotting the, the Weezing, but the Regi should get knocked out eventually. He's starting to power up more Pokemon on the bench, though. Yeah, look at that. There we go. We're going to see the Blizzard Bind here off of the Reg Ice. So, of course, that damage from the Poison as well being ticked up on our Pokemon checkup phase there. And we're over to eight inside of the field now. So, a damaged Galarian Weezing. Uh, and let's just see what the... Uh, the hand is for Aiden. Have you gotten a look at it, Wancho? Again, I got to see the Temple of Sinnoh, and I got really excited about that. 
but I just got to give him, yeah, I, I believe, yeah, it is there. I just have to give him such uh, a great commendation here because, yeah, that wasn't the time to play it. Now yes. that I'm looking at the board, yeah. you know, there was no threat to the Galarian Weezing. Reggie Ice doesn't really do anything. And now if you play the Temple of Sinnoh, you're, you're still going to get the knockout here anyway because now the damage will go up. But no, decides to not knock out the Reggie Ice. He's really wow. saving that Temple of Sinnoh. I would yeah. love to know, like, at what point, what is the right time to play that card? Yep, and that's just going to be a pass over to Charlie Kerr taking up that poison damage in between turns there. And we're over back on Charlie's side of the field. You got to think, too, Charlie has already taken two prize cards here. So only four more prize cards to, to take. As we said before, if the Reggie Rock can get powered up and take a knockout on that Eternatus VMAX, that would be three prize cards, exactly. which is a ton. Um, so Charlie, the kind of the ball is in Charlie's court at this point as far as prize cards go. It's going to be a mutual knock here. Yes, but the Weezing does get knocked out first because he does yes. get knocked out by the attack. The Reggie Ice will get knocked out in Pokemon Checkup. And yeah. again, it Aiden here, just uh, he's playing it massively, I think. There's another Galarian Weezing, but he's going to opt to go into the Eternatus instead. Very, wow. very interesting. Choosing to finally break the ability lock unless he has a switch. Let's see what Charlie decides to promote. Looks yeah. like, all right, maybe he... He needs the Glaring Weezing on the bench because he has Dark Patch potentially in hand. Yep. I can't quite see. You just have to move your hand a little bit more. No, it's going to be an attachment to the active there. Eternatus VMAX getting that energy. Ooh. We're going to see the boss on the Regirock. This is huge. That is the largest threat here on the board for Aiden. So taking that off the field is huge. But I got to think Charlie has some way to get out of this still. I mean, there's so many answers for um, the Reggie deck that I yes. feel like there's got to be something, but who knows how it's going to play out. Aiden just playing to the best of his ability as of right now, and it's just going to be a knockout there, taking another prize card. Of course, the other one that knocked out the Regice was the first, um, and this Reggie Rock going down is the second. So the game is now four prize cards for Aiden, three for Charlie. Let's see what Charlie chooses to promote here. It's going to be interesting for sure. Again, great play there by Aiden. Something of note, um, a Charlie, though, is has a pretty good uh, number of choice belts. He does play three choice belts, which is a lot in my opinion. So he might still have access lot, yeah. to one more in the deck. Again, just heads up on the uh, very heads up on the deck building skill there. Uh, but there is one choice belt attached now to the Red Gigas. It's doing 330 damage. Um, it's not 340, so that uh, Eternatus should be able to survive the turn unless, of course, we can find ourselves a another choice belt on the Reggie Rock potentially. There's definitely a, a, a Galarian Zigzagoon in this deck, right? Watch it now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Charlie would like to borrow one a little bit. I know, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> Let me scoop hey, up yours. I, uh, yeah, can I grab that one off your field real quick? Just no, grab it with sure. the net. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Goon. <laughs> but you never yes. know. Uh, that, I hate that feeling when you're just 10 damage short. Especially on a VMAX uh, Pokemon. Three That's three prizes. Yeah, that'd be for the win. That would be mm -hmm. for the win as well. But I mean, so. 330 damage is pretty good. Um, it's a large amount of damage. Charlie, again, with the slew of Reggie's. Reggie <laughs> Lackey can actually hit the bench. <laughs> yes. So that that 330 will matter. Absolutely. Once he attacks with a Reggie, he, he will take those three, three prizes eventually. Yeah, so this is really just Charlie setting up a checkmate situation here. Look at all those damage counters on Eternatus VMAX that right now. Is a lot. And again, the, one of the constraints when you're deck building an Eternatus deck is yeah. in order to be able to use Eternal Zone, you can only play dark Pokemon. That means yes. you have no access to something like Manaphy's Bench Barrier. No. Nope. Because he's water type. Unfortunately, there has to be a dark Manaphy for Eternatus to... to to be able Ooh. to survive the turn. But Temple of Sinnoh, that's a good play there. Will limit, that means you can't attack with their Regieleki unless you can bump the stadium. Yeah, I was just going to say that. You were talking about when is the time to play that Temple. At this point, Aiden needs to pull out all of the stops. Of course, Path to the Peak is no longer in play now, being bumped with that Temple so we can see um, a, a bench of eight, up to eight now here for Aiden. He does have the Judge as well. Again, Ooh. yeah, he was right again held it for the most opportune moment. Aiden's yes. back was against the wall. 10 HP left on his VMAX. Charlie Kerr only has to take that knockout, do 10 damage. He wins this entire match. Oh and because gosh. he held onto that Temple of Sinnoh, 
he has hope here. There he is hope. hope. Yes, there is hope to stall this out and be able to take something down here. I but don't see a counter stadium on the <laughs> on Charlie's hand. He has the right energy, right? He has the speed lightning energy. He doesn't yeah. even need a Reggie Gigas to, to attack. But Again, but he needs the stadium. Yeah, this is huge here. I mean, everyone talks about Marnie Path being so powerful. Temple of Sino Judge is equally <laughs> as powerful in this matchup. For in sure. the right matchup, for yes, sure. Yes, in this matchup <laughs> in particular, yeah, for sure. Um, 10 definitely. 10 HP. 10 Ooh. HP. That's the only barrier watcher that we see. I can't believe it's come down to this, especially when Charlie was so close as well to being there on the first turn and, and just being faced exactly. in this position again. All I need is this 10 damage, and I win this game, this 2-0 in the sets, and I'm making my way, hopefully, after that, into a top cut. I mean, this is, like, so much pressure on the line there here. It is. Dread N for a lot of damage. Again, it's 30 damage Ugh. for each dark Pokemon, and there's quite a bit. Reggie Lackey being thrown oh at. What, what was the top? What was the top? Oh, oh, was it? It was oh choice, choice belt. belt. A little too late on the choice, but again, would, would have loved to see it the wow. previous turn. Yes, yeah. Oh, would have loved it for sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now I, I have to think, what is Charlie's line of play? Do you yeah. retreat? Do you protect the Reggie Alecki? I don't think you do. You have to use the electromagnetic, electromagnetic sonar, but what is the right card to grab? Yeah, Supporter. This is, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. This is so tough here for Charlie. I mean, I'm sure would have loved to just top deck a stadium there, but hey, that's sometimes not how the cards go for you. You can't always be so lucky, I suppose. But hey, maybe the maybe the luck is being flipped after such an <laughs> incredibly powerful turn at one here. Aiden bringing it down to a tie in this match at this point. Both players three to three prize cards, but Aiden has to work through one prize card at a time through these Reggies. Uh, exactly. Charlie now benching a Reggie Rock with a choice belt here now, so that is coming back onto the bench. So the big knockout on a fresh Eternatus is 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 a possibility. And it's just a matter of finding the right cards. Again, something of note as well is that he did have the stadium in hand and Aiden played Judge the previous turn, which is at just yeah. that specific scenario, Judge is actually worse than Marnie because then you, there's a possibility he could still draw That's into true. that stadium. That's true. That is true. Yep, but better than nothing. Better than having it in hand, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see the speed lightning energy there attached to the Reggie Steel. And if you're wondering why what, why not why, attached yeah. on the Aleki, because of the Temple of Tino, you can't draw those two extra cards. Yep, so just preparing another Reggie on the bench there. And we're going to see that electromagnetic sonar. Do you get a support or do you just get the stadium at this point? Yeah, so this is any trainer card from the discard pile. Eyeing up that path to the peak, I think that's probably what is Even going to be the, the path, pick. path, though, again, you don't have the... You don't have the Reggies yet in hand. You don't have the way to to accelerate your energies. There's two Path of the Peak, I believe, in the discard pile. Looks like that's exactly what he's going to opt to get there. All right, so it's going to be the Path, and that is the move there for turn. After you perform a move on your Pokemon, it is your opponent's turn. So we're over on Aiden's side now, surviving <laughs> with that Eternatus VMAX. And now Aiden can really put even more pressure onto yes. Charlie because there's plenty of cards here for Aiden to play. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, surviving that turn was huge because yes. now you put more obstacles in the way of your opponent as far as navigating through these last couple of turns. Exactly, and you... You see there, Aiden, he, he does have another judge in hand. He, he did put it to the top of his hand there real quick. And, you know, because Charlie does have the path, although he didn't play a supporter last turn, you have yep. to think, do I play this judge? Yes, he has the path, but does he have the rest of it? I, I Sorry, does that, do I play the judge? I think you do. Path is just that scary. <laughs> I feel like our players usually err on the side of caution, for mm -hmm. sure. So I think we are potentially going to see that. But first, we're just going to see a quick ball discarding a Crobat, uh, failing the quick ball basic Pokemon search and just shuffling up the deck yes. here. And it's going to be a Crobat dark Ooh. asset. So thinning the hand and drawing Great in. draw there. I just have to say, he did find the switch. Yeah. He could switch into the Galarian we Weezing with the attachment for turn. Ooh. That's actually just enough. There's 70 damage there on the Reggie Alecki. Wow. That's going to be a knockout yeah. with 
Ability lock. Fantastic knockout there. The ability lock would be online here. There'd be another prize card down, which would take Aiden into the lead here as far as prize cards go. We're and seeing judge. a judge here for the disruption to Charlie's hand. Aiden is just navigating through these turns absolutely amazingly right now. And I cannot believe we are seeing this game. Uh, the table's turning so much in Aiden's <laughs> favor after such an incredible turn one again from Charlie. Again, I'm still just staring at the Eternatus with 300. I know, HP. right? So it's close. Like, it's 10. You can just literally breathe what? on the Eternatus and you win the game. And that but... Reggie Lucky's now being wiped <laughs> off the field exactly. in a second here as well. So and Charlie, oh, this is tough. Because of the, the glare and wheezing in the active, you're going to need more than just the stadium at this point. You're going to need oh, a yeah. way to gust and then you need a way to fill up the, the, the bench and then you need the stadium. Um, Charlie did, did get the path off Ooh. the judge. So... Abilities? No, no abilities <laughs> still. But the, the yes. colors of their energy will be activated, but... Yeah, so look at this here. Charlie, like we said, just has to overcome so many more obstacles now. Missing that uh, turn because of all of the hand disruption that's Ooh, been going on. He's thinking about it. Do you play the path I now? I know, yeah. Still drew into the path off of that judge. So it's like you said, Wancho. You shuffle. It doesn't go to the bottom of the deck off uh, like Amarni does. So that path is just right back into the hands here for mm -hmm. Charlie. But again, very lackluster field right now. Again, with the Reggies, you need the entire family. Yeah. Ordinary R Rod held a little bit to shuffle two back into the deck here, but you still need a way to draw them out. But let me call them out right now with the Regigate. Regigate attack does allow you to find at least one of the Reggies. So that much closer, you do have some time. Ada has two prizes. He has to take two knockouts, yeah. but... So time still, is time is ticking. That's what I'm saying. So still playing it just nice and slow, saying, okay, I, if I can establish my board, take this knock, I still have a chance to win here. But that is, of course, if Aiden is not able to do it first. Only two prize cards left to take. That Reggie Gate is going to take out that Reggie Alecki back onto the field. Temple of Sinnoh is still there, but Charlie did not play the path. It is still in hand <sighs> here. Escape rope. Escape rope being played now, opting to, you know what, I cannot wait. That, that's what I was thinking as well. You know, you have time. Severe Poison will do 60 a turn. Reggie, uh, Reggie Steel has 130. That's 60, yeah. 120. So it's going to take around three, three player turns to get that knockout. That might be just enough time for, for Charlie to, to find the out. So uh, oh, Aiden yeah. here opting the more aggressive route and just going for big we go. Radiant Etern uh, sorry, big Eternatus VMAX and Dread End there for the knockout. But will that open things up. Exactly. Because now I'm thinking oh, this would be abilities biggest comeback are up. ever. <laughs> I mean, there's still so many obstacles that Charlie has to get through, but it is it is possible. It's this turn, right? It's it either is. Charlie it is wins this turn. This turn. <gasps> but if you play the Path of the Peak, you can discard Path of the Peak. Now shuts off oh, Eternal no. Zone. Three. You can, there's more than five. There's more than oh my eight. Gosh. 330 no. HP. Out of the bar, but that's okay. Okay, Reggie we're fine. Rock has this is fine. Belt. We're Reggie Rock. We got Reggie Rock. That was pa that was panic mode, but yeah, Choice Belt is on the Reggie Rock. We're fine. It's okay. Uh, we do have the ordinary rod here being played to get um, those Pokemon out of the discard pile. I believe it was an Ultra Ball after yes. the ordinary rod to um, get the to Reggie get the Reg Ice. Ice. All right, so there's only, he only needs the Reggie Gigas now, and then he will have access to. The ancient That's all wisdom. Six. Yep. Exactly. Still has Dragon's Horde as zero, well. Yeah, zero cards in hand. Very, Ooh, very, very nice. important Dragon's Horde here. Very important Dragon's Horde that is going to be. This will determine the game here. He has to find a Reggie and a way to switch here. There's a way to switch. There's a way to switch. Oh. oh. Does not have a way there's to. No, get... There's no way to find the Reggie Gigas. It's the yeah. wrong Reggie. Yeah, does not have a way to search out another Reggie, and that's going to be oh. it. Aiden is going to take that game. Oh my gosh, Wancho. I'm stunned. <laughs> right on, like right beneath three minutes there on the clock. Aiden is looks stunned as well, just shaking the <laughs> I, head there. I cannot believe that is how this match played out after that. The initial turn one for both of those players, like I said, Aiden saw everything flash before their eyes in that turn one, but was able to just play it safe and 
take a win there and bring it to 1-1. One, one. 10 HP. That's all that. 10 yeah. HP and then when the when he played we the path. We were so scared. When yeah. he played the path and it was just gone all that hard work. <laughs> And that's and that was really the the entire narration there for Charlie in that match. There was just so many times where it just needs a little bit more and could just not get there. So even though it had to navigate through so many obstacles in that match, still yes. was not able to get that win. And, Again, oh, so close. I mentioned Reggie being a puzzle. You know, you need yeah. the, those pieces to align to really take those games. I mean, he was one energy away from just winning it on the very first turn. He was one choice spelt away yeah. from taking a knockout on a VMAX. He was finding the stadium, finding the Reggie Gigas away to taking a knockout and on the a, another VMAX. It and wasn't even to fault of Charlie either. I no, mean, I didn't see any sort not, of like major not. misplays as well. I mean, sequencing was almost perfect every single mm -hmm. turn that we saw. But yeah, just could not get there. And honestly, I feel like this game would hurt a lot uh, if you're in Charlie's I'm shoes. feeling it. Yeah, right I am now. too. I'm feeling it right now. But I, I have to too. give it up to Aiden. Playing it absolutely massively. I love the, the little mind games there with the Temple of Sinnoh. Absolutely. And of course, if this game does tie, which is, I mean, there's only one minute left on the clock here. If we don't see anything too explosive here in our game three and it goes to a tie, these players will be sitting at 32 points. And as we said, you know, you kind of want to be in that 35, 35 yeah. range. 34, yeah. there's still a possibility, but 35, that's exactly where you want to yeah. be. There's a possibility here. If Aiden doesn't find another, another Pokemon, uh, Crobat V is weak to fighting. So Charlie can still win here. And let's see here. What does, what do they have in the hand? He does have the quick ball. So that, he does have a Pokemon. That means he will have, you know, it, it's not going to be a donk, essentially. Yep. Could be a tie here. Does find the Radiant, uh, sorry, the Eternus. I'm, excuse me, <laughs> I, I just play the Radiant you Eternus a lot. You, yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, uh, you got uh, either either that or the Sneasler on your mind. But yeah, I guess the Radiant Eternus, too. I didn't even think about that. Of course, that is not the Etern we are talking about here in this mm -hmm. match, but still a really cool card. Yes, very, very <laughs> cool. Big Parasol now being played on the Eternatus V. Uh, it is. It does matter here yeah. on a VMAX because because of the blizzard bide on the Reggie Ice, just in case. But again, with only a couple of minutes left, maybe not so much. It's going to be a tie. Yeah, look at these players. They're just going to fist bump, realizing that neither of them, after those initial setups, can take an explosive uh, game-winning turn there in the last, you know, <laughs> 60 seconds up here. So, wow, Ooh. I cannot believe that is how this resulted. I'm sure if you're in Charlie's shoes there, being so close so many times, so, this hurts so quite a bit. But a Aiden was able to pull this out. Yes, exactly. But it, it, it does hurt, I'm sure, to be that close, but nothing to be ashamed of. They played it absolutely perfectly. They gave us such an amazing game. Yeah. I, 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 I was on the edge of my seat exactly. that whole I, time on show. I cannot think of a better a better game to showcase the talent of these players and the amazing possibilities of both these decks. And at the beginning of this match, you know, we said Aiden hadn't played a single game with this deck before jumping into this <laughs> regional. I did not spot that whatsoever. I, I highly doubt that. No, he played it like a pro. I know. <laughs>